I can't believe it. I just... I just can't believe it, George. Another episode of Umineko is coming out. Hey guys, it's me, Mr. 250, and welcome back to Umineko. Let's see how George is uh, going to handle this. He's obviously very mad at Rose, I'm sure. And he doesn't believe that anybody here is, uh, at least any of the servants anyway, is guilty. Especially not Shannon. Let's continue. Oh, oh, are they telling him what actually happened? George folded his arms and started humming again. And the kitchen was once again absorbed by a long silence. ジョージ様が、にわかには信じられない気持ちも私はよくわかります。何しろ、この目で確かに見たはずの私ですら、彼が何だったのかわからなくなる。私は確かに見た。そして、とっくみ合いまでしたはずなんです。なのに、あれが
I shouldn't... I should have cheered her up, saying that it was only a musty mirror covered in dust. ベアトリーチェ様というレアのような存在がいるという話は、バカバカしいと思っていましたが、最初はバカバカしいと思っていましたが、最初はバカバカしいと思っていましたが、最初はバカバカしいと思っていましたが、最初はバカバカしいと思
At least she did before she died. Uh. レイキョウだとかなんとか。同じ話は私も聞いたことがある。鏡はよくないものを反射して弾き返す力があるのだとか。その霊鏡があれば魔女のベアトリーチェに対抗できるかな。When George proposed this, the servants looked up. Oh, I see. Hmm. I really do like this music a lot, by the way. This one's a nice one. Hmm. I like that one. 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 だからものばこに入れて大事にしまっている。とそんなに大きいものではないのかもしれません。大きさの問題ではなかったと思います。私が割った鏡も一見大したことのない小さな鏡に見えました。相手がオカルトならこちらもオカルトの手段で対抗する
gained a new master and started to move. George, who was normally calm and gentle, was now oozing dignantly. Shannon checked the emergency flashlight. Just in case, she changed the batteries. Goto was testing several heavy looking cooking tools. Normally a highly praised chef like himself wouldn't want to use them for something other than their intended purposes. But now he was frantic to fulfill the orders of the one he accepted as his master. After some worrying, he took a large, thick feeling frying pan. That's an interesting thing to note, I didn't even think about that. They, they mentioned the new master thing. Is this supposed to be symbolic of them switching over from masters? Like next time they run into Rose, are they not going to listen to her maybe? Maybe. Genji removed several umbrellas from the umbrella stand set in the corner near the kitchen door. He took three of them. Maybe not, maybe I was overthinking that a bit. ご as Genji said that, he sat down. As though saying that he didn't intend to discuss this anymore, his gaze fell to the chessboard that he had played on with Nanjo. When George saw this, he decided to leave Genji there. Is it really? When George took an umbrella and dashed down the hallway, Shannon and Goto chased after him, each holding a tool. Uh oh. After they flew out of the room, Genji quietly stretched his hand out to the corner of the room with a chessboard. He softly pulled something that was there towards himself and hit it by covering it with his palm. Don't want the reader seeing it. Genji killed his breathing even more than before. As he did, something flashed gold. Thanks, Genji. From inside an ice pail set on the counter, a small gold butterfly appeared softly and silently. It was almost as though it had seen George and the rest off, and it was trying to secretly chase after them. It happened in an instant. The elegant gold butterfly flapping its wings was pinned against the wall by the knife Genji threw, just like a butterfly in a bug collection. After the gold butterfly beat its wings several times, looking like it was in pain, it accepted the fact that it couldn't break free, became fine gold powder and smoke, and disappeared as though, as though it had melted into water. Genji still gazed down at the chessboard as though nothing had happened. Maybe he would think up a brilliant move very soon. But no matter what move he made, his opponent would not be able to respond for all eternity. Even though he knew that, Genji searched for a brilliant move. It must have been the perfect way to kill time, during the short period before some fate would be given to him. He didn't know what result the roulette would bring about. But that decision would be made very soon. No one could interfere with the tumbling roulette ball.
Oh, I can't. I want to follow their story. <laughs> These guys' story is boring. All Rose is doing is all Battler's doing is crying, and Maria's being kind of weird, and Rose is just backstabbing everybody practically. The door to the parlor was not only locked, but blockaded with a barricade made of sofas and the like. So Rosa scowled, apparently thinking that if a suspicion per suspicious person appeared, it would be by breaking the window. Sitting on a one-person sofa, her back to the door, she continued to hold onto her gun. I didn't know what was what anymore, and even though my body and mind were wore out, I played with Maria as she wanted. Maria had said it. Beatrice wanted to see whether the epitaph, epitaph of the gold could be solved, so we had to challenge this riddle. In the beginning, I had been a little interested and had tried to solve it, but I had never had a clue about what that weird paragraph meant. I didn't doubt that there was some riddle hidden there, but I couldn't imagine that I would solve it by chance. In the middle part of the epitaph, there were the lines from the first to the tenth twilight, saying the journey saying the journey to the Golden Land. At the first twilight you shall lift up as a sacrifice the six chosen by the key. At the second twilight those who remain shall tear apart the two who are close. It was obvious that this hinted at the first six murders that had already occurred in the chapel in Jessica and Canon Coon's murders. This is being followed. We still had to be prepared for five more people to be killed. At the fourth twilight gouge the head and kill. Fifth twilight, gouge the chest and kill. Sixth stomach. Seventh knee. Eighth leg. Dr. Nanjo and Kumasawa Bachan's corpses hadn't been found. However, if we reasonably assumed that they were the sacrifices of the fourth and fifth twilights, they would surely be found in a pitiful state with their head and chest gouged. In which case, could we expect that three more would be gouged in the stomach, knee, and leg and killed? Who would that be? I looked around the room noticing that there were three people here, but how should I say it? My emotions seemed paralyzed. I couldn't understand my strange and frightening feelings. As I leaned on the sofa with the top part of my body, gazing at the ceiling, Maria noticed. Somehow it seemed as though she felt that I was slacking off in my riddle solving. She was mad at me. Like I wasn't being serious enough. No, Maria. Beatrice was sure. If you were to write this, how would you write it? I was sure that the witch had written her letter, written in her letter that she would give up on collecting the dead or something abstract like that. I optimistically took that to mean that she would give up on killing the whole family. But was it really written with that meaning? I didn't really feel like solving this riddle would actually save us. I thought that even if we did solve it, would that be doing just what the culprit wanted us to and it would all be wasted effort? そういうルールを奴が提示してるだけだろうこの謎を解けば多分じい様の隠し黄金のありかがわかるんだろう奴はきっとそれを狙っておお、狙わないよなんでそう断言できるんだよお前はさっきからペアトのものだもん自分のものを狙ったりなんかしないじゃ、じゃあどうしてベアトは俺たちにこんな大ヒントを授けてくれたんだというかどうしてこんなゲームじみたことを仕掛けてきたんだ魔法にはリスクが必要なのリスクよく意味がわかんねえな例えばマラソン完走すれば誰でももらえるメダルと一番になった人しかもらえないメダルって同じ価値だと思う思わねえぜうんつまりなんだよ結局やつは遊んでるってことなのかわざとこっちにチャンスを与えるようなことをして違うそれがね魔法というものなのどんな
大きな魔法にも絶対にリスクや弱点があるのううんないといけないの魔法って言われるとピンとこねえがギャンブルだって考えれば少しは理解できるなでかく失う覚悟がなきゃでかくは勝てないそして勝ち目の薄いギャンブルであればあるほど配当はでかくなるその通りだよだからベアトは儀式のリスクをちゃんとみんなに説明したのだからこの謎を解けばちゃんと儀式は中断されるだってそれを約束違反したらリスクにならない Okay, so is that why it might be somewhat possible for the servants and George to actually get the mirror then and she wouldn't just strike them down halfway through? Maybe? At least、uh, that's my understanding. ジョーカーは見分けがつかないほど成功でもどうして美しくないの人間は死を落とすから奇跡は起こせる不死の人間がいたとしてその人物に何の奇跡も起こせる道理はない私たちも人生も魔女も儀式も私たちはリスクを負
We should have all gathered in the dining hall, combining our knowledge to solve the riddle. If we'd combine the knowledge of that many people, maybe we would be able to at least grasp a thread of the answer. The greedy humans, desiring to gain something more than their opponent, were being offered up as sacrifices one by one, without gathering their knowledge together. In the end, did the humans get what they deserved? They thought that they were thinking, but they were actually thinking only of their greedy selves. In the end, chessboard theory is a technique of thinking where you project yourself on your opponent. So greedy people see their greedy selves inside their opponents. I looked vaguely, vaguely at Aunt Rosa. She was probably tired from being under all this tension the whole time. She couldn't sleep, but she kept staring vaguely at some point off in space. Aunt Rosa had proclaimed that she couldn't trust anyone who had not been killed. Aunt Rosa's chessboard thinking saw herself inside the opponent. In other words, Aunt Rosa might have been an isolated woman, unable to trust anyone and unable to let her guard down. Long ago, I think I heard a bit about it from my dad. Aunt Rosa had originally been a very obedient child, but her age was far too separated from the other siblings. And furthermore, because conflicting demands were often made of her by her confrontational siblings. Since she was young, her thoughts had become psychologically harsh. Often when she copied one of her siblings, another sibling would give her a hard time. Certainly Aunt Rosa had said many things today that could be taken as abusive language. Could, maybe. Just maybe. But in a sense, those are words that had been showered upon her and engraved on her vocabulary. The many abusive words that she had spoken were also the words that Aunt Rosa had been showered with in the past. Mostly by Eva. Uh, well, I guess maybe not, but now that I think about it, I've had the feeling that her style of speech sometimes has traces of cross oji san or Aunt Eva in it. I'd accepted that they might be similar because they were siblings, but maybe that wasn't the case. I sympathized for my heart with Aunt Rosa, who had come to think of being only gentle. Then what about Maria? Maria had been claiming something for a while. If we could solve the riddle that the witch announced to us, the ceremony would be halted and we would be definitely saved. And to think she also said that Beatrice would never break that promise. But this is Maria we're talking about. She herself would never break a promise and she had the most innocent heart. So she believed that Beatrice also wouldn't break a promise. She could believe that. But wasn't that just an image of Beatrice that Maria imagined? There's no proof that the real Beatrice definitely keeps her promises, right? Oh boy, but the red text says otherwise. I, yep, that's, yeah. さすれば儀式は終わる。それ以上誰も死にはせぬ。お前みたいな魔法を<笑> だが約束として口にしたことを保護にしたことは一度もない。人間はどうか約束を。必ず約束を守ろう。なんてキャッチ。ちゃんと利口されてるかどうかは疑わしいな。わらわから見れば人間の方がよっぽど利己的で下道な
人間の約束ほど疑わしいものはないわらわも時に人間と契約するがくだらない願い一つ叶えるのにどれほど厳重に取り決めをするか想像もつくまい少しでも隙があると連中はすぐに叶える願いの数を100に増やせとか小さな豆粒に変身してみろとか言い出す親父によく言われたぜ<笑>よく読まずに犯行を押すやつは骨の髄まで喋られて当然だって言ってたぜ悪徳で荒稼ぎしてやがったんだな察しろ人は生まれながらに詐欺を知りはせぬどこかでこう思っただから覚えた<笑>押し付け合わずにはいられぬ人の世の罪かはてどこの魔女に聞いたやらまあいいそなたが思っているほどわらわも無慈悲ではないぞ<笑>嘘をつけこれだけの大勢をこんな残酷な方法で殺しておいて何が無慈悲ではないだ約束は守るだといい加減なことを言うな俺はお前を認めない断じてそれを譲らないことだけがお前への抵抗だと俺は信じてるなるほど永遠の災波であるのはわらわに対しても同じであるというわけか<笑><笑>かもしれぬな千年は長い魔女の強さは魔力より我慢強さで決まるのかもしれんななるほどベルン教の恐ろしさもうなずける何をわけのわかんねえ話をブツブツ言ってやがるさっさと永遠の災波とやらを続けろよ俺は千年でも一万年でも付き合う覚悟だぜ<笑>よいよい少しは戦う気力も戻ってきたようだなそうでなければつまらないほら対戦ゲームでもよくあるだろう乱入したけど相手があまりに弱くて拍子抜けでわざと負けて最終ラウンドまで延長させて最後に本気でフルボッコにすることとかってあるだろう<笑>例えの意味がわかんねえよワインと同じよよく熟成させねば輝かぬお前はそれに耐えられるワインだわらわがじっゆっくり熟成させてやるそなたをわらわの優雅な時間を彩る最高の美酒に育て上げてやるぞだからこの程度で屈服などするなわらわを引き続き否定してくれよ何しろわらわはそなたが認めぬ限り儚き幻想に過ぎぬのだから<笑><笑> oh boy, are we going back? Yay! Glass breaking sound again. Gotta love that sound. Oh boy, yeah, we'll leave this for next time.、Uh, thoughts on the.、Uh, let me know what you guys think about the black text box.、Um, I'm not a huge fan of it just because I'm worried about the background text, which you can't see because my mouse is not in the clip, so I should stop pointing with it. But all the, all the background text, the Umineko Nako Koro Ni down here, it kind of gets in the way of the white text. It's not, it's not bad, but it does get in the way a little bit. I wouldn't mind trying this one. This one's kind of cool looking. And then, of course, I've been obviously using Text Window 3 for a while. That one's not bad. Anyway, let me know what you guys think.、Uh, anyway, but I'll see you guys next time for some more Uineko. Bye!